Uh, how is all of this playing out for your European investment strategy then, Grace? How much are you focused on? We're not necessarily expecting a great change then in the, in the messaging, maybe, or, or action, at least, from the ECB. Is there anything that you could hear today that would make you question any of the positioning that you have at the moment? No, we, we're, we're constructive on equities. I mean, valuations are, are, are high, obviously, relative um, to history in an absolute term, but we still think that equity markets are going to lead um, cross-asset returns, or certainly versus bonds, over the next 12 months. Within the equity complex, we are looking more to the US um, and also to China as areas where we see um, you know, stronger um, and, and more reliable um, seg segments of, of growth. And I think Europe has some really interesting pockets, even if it isn't one of our um, top geographies when, when we look at it on an aggregate basis. And I, I would point certainly to um, sustainability factors, the E and ESG, that environmental driven growth where Europe is really leading. Um, and we've got some good entry points now because some of these stocks have pulled back some 10, 15 percent, um, you know, due to concerns um, around where bonds have, have got to. Um, and then there are other things, you know, luxury goods um, you mentioned just before I, I came on air, but that's, that's a key part of of the European equity market, because when we look around the world and say, what does Europe have that other regions simply don't have, um, you know, but that our luxury companies are really um, front and centre of that. And then, of course, Europe has a nice degree of cyclicality to it. When we look at the exposure to financials, insurance, um, industrial companies and, and mining, which has been an area we've been a big advocate of, um, then that cyclicality also can favour European equities. Mm. But, but we do see that lower in the pecking order geographically overall. Yes, some of those luxury names doing well again today. You can see that Caring is doing pretty well over in Paris, the retail sector, the second best performing in today's session. Uh, Grace, which are the other sectors that you're looking to play catch up on a cyclical front? Because you've, you, you, I, I know that cyclical recovery is one of the themes that, that you and many others are playing at this time. How much of that cyclical recovery in, for example, aviation or those really beaten up sectors, how much of that is already done and how much of that is still ahead? I think there's another leg to come. Now, as you say, Anna, this has been something that it's 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 not new. You know that the reflation trade has certainly been front of centre um, in the market over the last few weeks. But actually, these rotations started back in in, in around September time um, and accelerated through the first the fourth quarter of last year. The piece to me that's been left behind um, and that we're focused very strongly on at, at the private bank is the consumer segment and particularly the switch that we're going to see. Um, you know, in in consumer spending on services. All of this feeds into, obviously, physically, when people can move around, the, the, the end of lockdown um, and, and rising mobility. But also, you've got a tailwind from fiscal spending. You've got a tailwind from um, the overall wealth effect that people have had from, from having um, you know, accumulated savings um, over the last year. And I think when you look at Europe versus the US when it comes to consumer and pent-up demand, um, there's reason to favour Europe because we've, we've had more restrictions around mobility. So, you know, as you say, sectors like airlines, hospitality, parts of retail that include luxury, but also um, high street retail, I think are poised for quite a healthy recovery. And, and what's so fascinating here is that I think analysts are still underestimating this, you know, across the street. Um, you know, human nature is to be more cautious um, and we don't yet have a full roadmap apart from perhaps in the UK for that reopening story. So I think cautious expectations, a big bounce coming and potentially this longer term wealth effect leaves the consumer in Europe okay. in a very strong position.